Thank you very much, Jacob, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, I would like to uh, thank uh, that I can today present you our approach, our opinion um, on carbon accounting and carbon reducing. And I will not so much talk about PCF in detail. We do this for our uh, Go Green products, of course, but I would like to talk about the yeah, the, the, the uh, PCF as a first step for everything that will uh, follow uh, afterwards. So, as Jacob said, I, I'm working in the, in the headquarters of uh, Deutsche Post DHL in Bonn, and um, I would like to, to give you an insight on, yeah, on our reduction measures and uh, even on some really challenging facts that we are facing, um, and hope that you uh, will find that interesting. So first of all, I would like to give you just a few, uh, few words to, towards our climate protection program, Go Green, then tell you more about our carbon accounting and controlling, as we uh, name it, and then uh, show you some uh, examples on improving carbon efficiency. So the climate protection program, Go Green, uh, maybe you have heard of it. Um, that, is our, that is our purpose. As a, as a big logistics company, as a worldwide operating company, uh, we feel that we have to reduce our emissions as well. And um, so on the left-hand side, you see some of the reasons we're doing this. And uh, one reason, of course, is that uh, customers ask for green solutions. And um, yeah, we want to uh, yeah, want to act sustainable uh, in the way we can as a logistics company. So you see here our efficiency target, which we uh, which we developed, uh, w and that means that we want to be 30 percent more efficient in 2020. And uh, that means we have an uh, we don't have a, we don't set an absolute uh, reduction target. Uh, for this is really um, difficult to, to reach for a logistics company when the, uh, yeah, the growth of the sector uh, is in there too. So we said we want to be efficient, more efficient by each parcel, by each mail, by each letter, by each uh, pallet uh, we move. And what you see here is our so-called Go Green House. And, um, this should show you how we try to uh, reach our goals. So uh, our protection, uh, climate protection program is managed along these five uh, sections, and I would just briefly go through them. The first one is provide transparency, and that's the first step for everything, because uh, yeah, you need to know what amount of carbon you emit before you can do uh, the second and third steps. The second uh, uh, is uh, the, yeah, our uh, reduction measures, where we, uh, we, we collect them under the second uh, pillar. I will uh, tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, then, of course, we think that to mobilize our employees and, of course, our management is a very important uh, topic to reach these ambitious goals. Then we have the fourth pillar, which is uh, the... yeah which are our Go Green products. So this is um, CO2 neutral products we offer to our customers. And uh, we want to be yeah, a green leader in the logistics company by that. And the second is um, yeah, the political uh, area. So we would like to actively take part in discussions like these uh, yesterday and today. And of course, be prepared for maybe regulatory changes that might occur in the future. And um, I would like today uh, yeah, focus on the first two areas, so carbon accounting and the reduction measures. First question is how do we account uh, for the carbon and what do we do with that afterwards? So we, for accounting, we use the greenhouse gas protocol, which all of you, uh, I'm sure, know, and uh, with some exceptions. For example, we only account for CO2, not for all greenhouse gases. Why is that? We um, made an, uh, yeah, we made an, 
example, or we had a look at our greenhouse gases in total and found out that 97% uh, of that is CO2, so we only account for CO2. Um, in the field of supply chain, where we operate uh, larger warehouses with refrigerators and so on, we calculate all greenhouse gases, of course. And um, so we, we're using the greenhouse gas protocol as it is right now, but as you know, uh, there's uh, new developments going on. So we support this in being part of the road testing of the new greenhouse gas protocol for both standards for the uh, supply chain and for the product standard as well. Now, the question is, why do we build a group-wide carbon accounting? And some questions or, or some answers are that, uh, yeah, we want, to, we want to achieve transparency. We want to support our calculation on product and on customer side, product carbon footprint, customer carbon footprint, because this is something customers ask us. They don't ask, not only ask for products, but they say, okay, we are a global company um, and we are, we are contracting you globally, so what is our footprint with you globally? And of course, we want to track our success in, in minimizing carbon and uh, want to demonstrate our leadership. So what we did and what we are still doing is um, that we use our existing finance system, uh, which is already in place all over the world in every place where we, uh, where we work, where we operate, to add to this uh, system the carbon side. So um, if there's an invoice, we're not only counting uh, in for the, for, the, for the euros or for the, for the money, but also, like in this example, for the liters of diesel that have, been, uh, that have been sold. So what we think is the, the big opportunity of that is that this is the finance system, is a, a system, a standardized system which is in place, and all responsibilities are... Um, are divided worldwide and everybody knows what to do and so we can now on a monthly basis uh, check our emissions regarding to, to en energy consumption um, like you see here. Of course for scope 3 data this is uh, a bit more complicated. Uh, for example, our subcontracted transport, so we, we have uh, uh, lots of subcontractors. And uh, re regarding to this, we're trying to build up a subcontractor management. And um, I can't tell you too much about that at the moment, but um, we're trying to work together with them to, um, yeah, to get a better data basis um, in the future. So... We're collecting the data on a yeah, globally uh, level, and the data for that comes out of the local uh, data management systems, the local finance systems, the local environmental and operation systems. As I just said, transparency for us is only the first step. So the carbon accounting, we're collecting the energy consumption and, which is uh, also important, a reference base. So we want to know um, how much carbon is that per transported item, for example, or per square meter in a warehouse. So that is the data uh, collection. And in a second step, we talk about carbon controlling, which, um, yeah, which is used for some reporting needs that we see uh, are necessary. So all data comes into, into, this, into yeah, a cube like this, and uh, we, we will fulfill some reporting uh, needs. First of all, uh, the public. Of course, we publish a sustainability report every year and um, yeah, publish our corporate carbon emissions on that. So that is quite easy. That is in place for years now. But what is even more important for us is to have a look at some other levels, uh, like products, like customer, or the management at the relevant level. So products, I don't need to tell you. People would like to know what is the, the carbon footprint of a product. 
and customers would like to, to know that as well. And uh, yeah, even the, or the, the, the most important thing in my eyes is uh, the, the management at the local, at the relevant level, because only if you can provide information on carbon and information on energy consumption to a local manager somewhere in the country, on some side, he or she can, um, yeah, can try to start reduction measures. So this is, the, the, for us, it's the most important point. So, and only if you have all these points fulfilled, uh, if you have a carbon accounting, if you have reference basis, if you can uh, control that, and if you can, uh, if you know, if you can uh, allocate that to, to the four points that are written here, then you can have uh, a carbon management and start to do uh, efficiency or reduction projects. So now I would like to, to share some examples of reduction projects uh, with you. And um, here you see some, yeah, some, some, some key words and, and some pictures on w where we are engaged. And for example, in, in, of course, we're, we're trying to optimize our fleet. We are uh, trying to uh, do combined transport or modal shifts if possible or if the customer would like to do that or uh, sometimes, of course, we go proactively to the customer and say, hey, you don't need to fly all your stuff. You can at least take uh, some of them on, on, an, on an ocean uh, vessel. Um, we're testing alternative fuels and powertrains, of course. Uh, because uh, transport is our main, our main focus. Aerodynamics uh, is an interesting point, and of course, network optimization. All these reduction measures uh, we do, uh, we consolidate in these three pillars, so it's vehicles, real estate, and the network. And um, I would like to show you some, some interesting things and some challenges we're facing. Uh, mostly in the in the road sector, so uh, with the vehicles, and a small example in the network, in the network uh, pillar. So what you see here is um, are two two cars we use for the uh, for the urban distribution of mail and parcel, um, and you see the number of cars we have. Uh, that's for uh, that's for Germany. The numbers. So 70,000 vehicles, 2.8 ton, and 8,000 vehicles, 3.5 ton, approximately. And uh, what is interesting is uh, when you have a look at the average driving cycle per day, which is 30 to 35 kilometers, so that's not really much. And um, the longest driving uh, tour distance is about 100 meters. So when we now, uh, or, yeah, w when we now would, um, uh, w would take only the the data the manufacturer gives us regarding the fuel consumption, uh, then with the data you see in the, in the yellow box uh, on the right-hand side, so that would 6.2 or 8.9 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. But as we have, a, as a, we have a, a, a fleet organization, we know our numbers, and surprisingly, our numbers are a little bit higher than these from the manufacturers. So these are these are the, this is the real uh, consumption uh, within our purpose. So that's, uh, that's a big problem when you want to rely on um, the manufactured data. Um, okay, I skipped this example as I'm showing the three minutes warning. Um, what I want to share with you is, is this slide, which shows one of the, uh, one of the problems, or Sorry, one step back. So the, the, uh, for, for, the, for the urban transportation, it seems that, for example, electromobility would be a good idea because of the, uh, yeah, of the examples you just saw. But when you look at, at the numbers, what I would show you right now is these uh, wicker types and the area types we divided. And you see in the yellow boxes is the footprint, is uh, the kilotons of CO2 that comes out of this uh, part and uh, in the gray circle you see the total share of it and then you see that the the first the first line that would be the the urban transportation that would be these cars which we can uh, uh, which we can um, 
change to electromobility, but that is only 5% of our footprint in that sector. So the bigger footprint, 80, uh, 81%, is in the higher classes, is in the heavy truck class. And there is no, at the moment, there is no uh, technological solution uh, or anything similar there that uh, we can... Uh, that we can uh, uh, get hold of and uh, start to, to reduce emissions in this sector. So this is, uh, this is a, a very big problem for us, and this is always where we say electromobility is good for, for private and is good for uh, urban uh, transportation, but not for the big uh, heavy trucks, for example. Okay, so then the, the solutions we have is, or what we uh, think we have to do is to burn clean and to burn less. Of course, burn clean could mean uh, biofuels if all problems will be solved someday, uh, which is, uh, I, I don't know if this will happen, but that could be one of the big uh, 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 levers for us. Okay, and so this is the last slide. I would like to show you on the network side what is possible. What you see here is um, a customer's network in Europe and um, you see the costs to operate that and you see the CO2 emissions. And uh, we have a specialized team um, who, uh, yeah, who tries to optimize networks uh, for, for different reasons. Example, for, for costs, for time and for carbon as well. So what they did, uh, they find this is the least cost option. So they, they managed to cut down the cost by 10%, but at the same time, carbon emissions grew by 9%. So what is needed is an, 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 an emission and carbon optimized network. And that would, in this case, in this case it was possible, so um, they, could, uh, they could minimize uh, uh, carbon and uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but not too much. Of course, this is not possible for every customer. Of course, this is not possible for every, uh, for every part, but uh, this is a, an example on how it could work. Okay, thank you very much.